everyone, Sema Martin here and welcome back to my live chats. This is the last live chat of the week and it's been so exciting chatting to so many different artists every day this week about different topics. If you've missed any of them, don't worry, they're on my IGTV channel and you know you can watch them back anytime. So today we're going to talk about um, getting yourself out there, which is super important as an artist. You can be the best artist in the world, but if you don't get yourself out there and if you don't get people seeing your work, you won't sell any. So the most important thing about being an artist and having an art business is to get yourself out there and make the most of what you do. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So as a reminder, this is the first year anniversary of my book, Art is my career, how to start an art business, which tells you everything that you need to know about starting an art business. Um, it's all based on my four years of experience of being a full-time artist, and I've got everything that you need to know in here. This is everything that I've done to successfully be a full-time artist, and I wanted to put it all in one place for new artists like you guys who want to turn their passion into a career. So I've got it all here for you guys. <laughs> if you don't have your copy yet, you can get it as an ebook on Amazon Kindle, eBay, Etsy, my website, artismycareer.com, and you can get the physical copy on my website, artismycareer.com, and on Jackson's Art Supplies. So head over to any of those websites where you can get a copy of this book. And you also get access to the Facebook community group where you can mix with other artists like yourself, ask questions, any questions that you have about your art and about your art business. Um, and you can ask them in the group and it's super useful. There's loads of people on there, over 500 people there now. Um, and it's just a really lovely community group full of lovely artists. So it's just it's super easy and nice to get on with them and ask any questions that you like about your business. So we'll just join Hi, Seema. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Is Amazing. it Yusa? Yes, it Yusa? is. <laughs> yes, okay. I, just, I was wondering how to pronounce your name, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining me. I've been looking forward to talking to you. I'm so sorry on Monday when you couldn't join. I didn't realize that you can only have three Me people. too, by the way. I didn't know I was either. sure that you could have four. Like, I Googled it so many times. Okay. Um, and it kept coming up saying, yes, you can have four people on live. But no, that wasn't the case. But I'm so pleased that you've come back today. Um, I've been dying to talk to you because I absolutely love your artwork and everything you do. So would you like to start by introducing yourself and what you do? Start back at the beginning. Tell me everything. Sure. First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And I love your artwork as well. And I, oh, I, I absolutely love your journey. When uh, I listened to it um, with uh, on the Art Biz uh, podcast, I was so amazed. Mm. So uh, you oh, really inspired you. me a lot uh, throughout this journey until today. Um, I started off uh, maybe three years ago after uh, graduating as, um, as an engineer. Mm -hmm. So as a civil engineer, actually. I even uh, studied my master's. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, this time of unemployability, uh, I, had, uh, I had a couple of uh, months where I was like, okay, so I'm applying for jobs, but I literally have nothing to do. And it wouldn't hurt to have, you know, some backup income. So yeah. um, I started customizing actually for um, my friends and relatives. Um, I started customizing uh, their bags and shoes. I didn't know what was the right paint to use. I didn't use the right medium. Like some of my friends have like sticky bags like till today. Like <laughs> I did that four years ago and they're still sticky because I used oh, no. <laughs> kind of paint. But um, yeah, so I did that for a couple of years. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. it was until the pandemic has hit where I realized that I didn't enjoy it anymore. And I realized that I wasn't putting my own personality on the work. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the fact that, you know, I was doing something sustainable because, you know, mm. it's, I was basically recycling something that mm. people have into something that they can reuse every day or like it's an old mm. bag that's just, you know, on a shelf and I've been, you yeah. know, recycling for them. 
But then I realized it wasn't my own identity being on the work. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't want that. And I wasn't growing as an artist. I mean, for sure, I was, you know, developing my skills because, you know, it, it's small items. So you're putting more uh, work into it and you're putting mm -hmm. more detail into it. But I wasn't yeah. improving myself as, okay, this is user style. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So um, since March last year, to be honest, I decided... Uh, I want to stop doing that and I want to focus more on user's identity and uh, I'm still finding that journey out and yeah, uh, yeah this is where uh, the idea of the 30 day art challenge in Ramadan that I just finished has came <laughs> and it initially came from your idea of 30 reels. Oh yeah? <laughs> yes. Uh, so when I saw you do that and I saw you so dedicated, I was like, this is amazing. I should do something like that. So uh, when, I, when I was discussing this with my husband and I was discussing it with a couple of um, friends and my sister, uh, she was like, why don't you just do like one keyword a day and see if people like it? And I did that. Mm -hmm. So every day I was suggesting, it was, it was very tiring. You must have mm. felt tired yeah. as well. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it's exhausting. Like 30 days is a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. I was like, I need to think about committing the next time I'm doing this. So yeah. I, I, every day I posted a different keyword. I didn't paint for 30 days, to be honest. I painted mm. for like 13 or 14. It was, it was exhausting. Uh, mm. But a lot of people were, you know, participating. They were having fun. Uh, I made yeah. connections with a lot of my followers. So, um, yeah, until today, this is, uh, this is what it came to. Uh, I'm, mm. I'm still getting commissions for artwork and uh, wall murals, but I'm refusing mm. any, um, let's say, customizing on, you know, individuals' items or accessories. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. So did you find doing this 30 day challenge really helped you connect with your community then and your followers? Definitely. And I even started a blog actually on my, um, on my website where I, okay. uh, and the first article was, you know, the 30 day challenge, what I learned about it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, it was, um, I got a lot of benefits from it, to be honest. I connected with people and I connected with followers. I never met before in my life or I still don't mm. know them in real person but you know you still you yeah yeah build that connection and um, mm. the other thing is I I kind of discovered my own style Seema like when you mm -hmm. paint constantly you yeah. you're using the same colors and you're using uh, for example the same brush the strokes mm. you're doing you know you start mm. to notice a pattern of things you're doing mm. as an artist and then one day you're just creating this artwork and you're like I did that I'm impressed yeah. by that and if That's I see good. it from another artist, I'm probably going to buy it. So, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it feels good. It feels really good. I like that. So now I'm just thinking of going to um, a direction where I have mm -hmm. um, my own color palette and my own mm -hmm. uh, style. Uh, yeah. I know it took, it took a lot of artists years to discover mm. it so it really does I, yeah yeah I don't want to rush it and uh, mm. I want to just you know sink into it and as long as I'm happy and well <laughs> after yeah. this year this is what we learned <laughs> yeah it's a process isn't it so it's about like trying things out trying new things um and just sort of going with the flow that's what I think anyway because I'm also trying to find my own style with my artwork okay. which is uh kind of kind of difficult to do in between like pet portrait commissions that I do because now I'm trying to I'm trying to learn how to paint and it's very different from using color pencil um so it's like you know back to basics with a whole new medium kind of thing um which is quite hard to do when you feel like so advanced in another medium exactly. so but yes yeah, it's, it's quite fun like you just have to go through the process and enjoy it and really try and really try and don't put pressure on yourself for it to be perfect exactly. every time as well yeah. like because I found that, like, because I did the 30-day challenge in January with um, Andrea Earhart, who did okay. her, like, you so see, you paint, paint one thing every single day for 30 days. I think okay. I kept up with it for 26 days. Like, it was so That's hard. That's amazing. So, yeah, you have to complete it. So every yeah. day. So you should have, like, 30 new art pieces by the end of the month, which is, you know, a wonderful thing to have. But, oh, my goodness, it was so hard and so exhausting. So I was trying to do that as well as doing my commissions. And so I just yeah. I kept it small. Um, yeah. Obviously, the first one was super complicated. Because so, you go into it thinking, oh, yeah, I could do that in a day. But, like, no. <laughs> you can't what do medium that. did you use? Pardon? What, me what medium did you use? Um, oil paint. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that's, how, that's what, very different than what we usually use. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really different. And I, I haven't oil painted since, you know, I was 16 doing my GCSE and yeah. now I'm 30. So like, <laughs> I haven't really touched oil paint in that long, but I've been collecting like this medium with all the stuff that you do with it. And I just haven't really done any of it. Um, so yeah. it was really interesting. And I do feel like by the end of the 30 days, I did know more about what kind of strokes I liked and what color palette I liked, like exactly. you were just saying. And it is all, it just goes to show that if you practice something every day, it does get better and it does change. And I think putting yeah. in that effort is obviously the hard part, but I think it's also the most rewarding as well. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. That's, that's the commitment that you need to make. Uh, yeah. to get there and as you said uh, when you you know get between um work or like commissions it just takes your mind off it and you're like mm. oh now I need to like stick to it more and I need to like you know keep practicing but it, is, yeah. it does take time but we just need to embrace it I guess <laughs> yeah definitely now I have I've been trying to sort of do that again of like starting my day with an abstract painting I've only mm. done it like four times so I haven't really committed to it as much as I should but it is actually quite a fun way to start the day because then I spend the rest of my day doing like a highly detailed pet portrait drawing. Mm -hmm. So it's quite mm -hmm. nice to start the day just doing just something that doesn't mean anything. And you could just like be messy and free and just like, uh, it's quite nice to sort of think in those terms. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And yeah. with abstract, um, I discovered actually that I'm more into combining some abstract um, uh, work with some natural elements or elements mm -hmm. from, you know, a natural habitat. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so this like is mixed one of the things media, I discovered. Like Mm -hmm. And it sometimes it's mixed media, but it's me mainly with acrylics. But it's more mm -hmm. about, for example, abstracting some of the painting, and some of the painting comes off like a you know a, th okay. a real detailed painting. Like mm. for example, you know I, my my most recent one was a, um, a face uh, of a girl with like a, a, an abstract head crown of mm -hmm. flowers. So uh, combining these together makes me feel like oh, I have the freedom in something. But at the same time, I can show my real skills with um, detailed drawing. Mm. So, yeah, so combining these together uh, made me feel like, oh, this is something I want to, you know, pursue mm. trying out. And uh, also, Seema, like, I discovered a couple of new artists that combine, actually, acrylics with watercolors and pencils. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I was so fascinated by how they're combined together in such an amazing way on canvas. Mm. So I actually have a, a three-day workshop uh, after next week with an, a local artist. Her name is Farah Basteki. I'm so mm -hmm. excited because <laughs> she puts like, oh my God, the effort she puts in in her workshops. Like yeah. she, her watercolor workshops are like no other. And this is something else actually I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about. Um, since the, the pandemic, I noticed that I like giving workshops. And mm -hmm. I did a couple of workshops online just for fun with people. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, you know, some people joining that are not even my region. They were yeah. joining the, the workshop. So I was like, okay, maybe I should consider to take a, uh, a certificate. And that's what I did. I took a, mm -hmm. um, a training certificate from my local academy. And um, yeah, so I've, since then I've been giving workshops. I've been also experimenting in workshops. That's amazing, um, yeah. Yeah, I did a couple where uh, we painted on bags. Okay. But I, uh, I noticed that uh, it's nice, but it's very, very niche. People don't mm -hmm. always, you know, like it. Because, you know, mm -hmm. some girls are like, oh, I don't, I don't like the kind of bag you're painting on. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get yeah. all sorts of people. And yeah. then uh, I discovered um, actually that I was, I was reading into meditation. So I thought, why don't I mix that with, especially with what's happening? I think people would love to meditate and paint. So mm -hmm. I did a total of four or five uh, painting with meditation workshops, and they turned out to be really good. Wow. Um, yeah, was that live, not... like on a Zoom meeting or something? No, that was actually in a, um, that was actually in a spa in Kuwait. Uh, oh, wow, okay. Located, yeah, the location was amazing because it was like near a pool, near a pool yeah. where I, um, I put all of my easels and all the, the, the the items people needed mm -hmm. and we kept social distancing and yeah. um, 
I, I'm, I'm never going to forget this. Uh, one of the girls, I, and I'm not a professional meditator. Like I recently started meditating. Like it's yeah. not something I've did my whole life, you know? Yeah. And so I went to one girl and I was like, are you okay? And then she looked at me and she was crying. And she's like, is it normal that I'm crying? And I was like, <laughs> yes, it's totally normal. This is what I want. Like I wanted people, you know, to get this, um, to get their emotions and mm. anxiety that we, we have. Uh, we've been experiencing for a long time now yeah. since with lockdown and you know some people kept going into lockdown and out of lockdown mm. so um i i mainly created this workshop for people to you know experiment something different and get their feelings out there so mm. uh it was amazing it was amazing That's fantastic. what i was yeah. saying it was amazing what i was saying so uh this workshop but unfortunately it needs good weather and it's like 50 mm. degrees celsius now in kuwait so <laughs> We need to just postpone it to maybe a better weather. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of workshops and it's been really mm -hmm. nice because, you know, we always meet, you You kind of like meet people that are, um, you know, that need help also in the mm -hmm. art uh, world. And I mean, this is what you've been doing, which is amazing. And the book is amazing. And oh, I think it's you. a great way to connect with people. Mm, definitely. So how do you advertise your workshops? Uh, I just, to be honest, advertise them on on my page, and we mm -hmm. also have kind of um, um, what do you call it? Um, there's this global website for booking events. Um, oh, okay, like an uh, events.com kind of thing. Uh, but actually, th there's a girl who did it locally, uh, just for uh, trips in Kuwait. And okay, um, hello Explorer, and um, they have been amazing. Their team is amazing, and. They advertise for me and the booking is through them. Right. Sometimes some venues are through them. Mm. Yeah, so um, it's really great. And funny enough, actually, next week I have a, a, a workshop called My Artistic Journey. So this is right. the first time I do this. Uh, so I, I read through your book and I read through a lot of uh, course, courses as well on Skillshare. And I founded this three-day workshop where people can you know, start to think about how they can be an artist and have their mm -hmm. own style, which is something I'm still struggling with. Yeah. So I'm hoping with this community that I start off from next week and probably build up, mm. I can uh, go into uh, helping people with the problem that I have, <laughs> which mm. is finding their own art style and finding their own art journey. Yeah. Um, yeah, because even through the 30-day 30, the 30 challenge, interestingly enough, one of the uh, people who was uh, doing the challenge she recently um, basically uh, quit her job. She's in her 50s. And she was like, thank you so much for doing the challenge because I never knew, like, this is how far I can, you know, come with painting. She was mm. always she was always this um, low-key, uh, you know, artist. She didn't show her work to anyone. But mm. now she's like, oh, my God, like, I want to do your next workshop. I want to do more. I want to, you know, play around That's more. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah wonderful. Yeah. You're inspiring you artists going. all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I try. Yeah, I really no, that's try. wonderful. Yeah, I'd, l I'd love to come to one of your meditation workshops. It sounds really cool. <laughs> I'd be honoured, but I think I'd want to come over to France and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, come here. <laughs> it's very nice weather. Not right now, but it was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet it's better than Kuwait. <laughs> So I'd love to talk more about like ma your marketing, like how do you advertise mm -hmm. um, your workshops and your work? Like, do you just rely on social media or do you do YouTube or anything like that? Uh, to be honest, I'm very bad with my marketing. <laughs> uh, I'm not the best. Uh, and this it is, is hard. hard. It is hard. It is hard. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. You never know. Mm. Like your, your target segment is always going to change. And especially mm. that I shifted my, um, let's say my business model yep totally shifted it um it's it's very hard because my followers were interested in something and now i'm introducing them to something completely mm. different and mm. they're like what are you doing with your life but yeah. it's like hang on guys i'm getting there <laughs> uh, <laughs> bear with but, me <laughs> yeah bear with me please uh, <laughs> i mainly use instagram to be honest and as i said other platforms like hello explorer and also the people i uh, collaborate with on um, on the workshops they mm -hmm. help me to be honest because for example the spa venue they have a lot of uh, workshops going on anyway so mm -hmm. uh, when they posted it their followers were interested in that oh um, fantastic yeah I mainly use Instagram for now but it's because I don't have time to be honest for other social media 
um, yeah. platforms. What do you recommend? What have you seen working for you? Um, for me, it's mostly Instagram and Facebook. Like Facebook mm. is, has always been the one that's, you know, given me the most work. Um, I think it's just because of the target audience. Like I do feel like an older generation is on Facebook and they're mm, the ones mm. that want to commission most from me. There, are, there yeah. is, you know, a bit younger generation on Instagram, but um, I have started getting more commissions through Instagram now as well. Um, I'm, I've sort of tried with TikTok. Like I haven't, I haven't gone full commitment mode yet. Um, I'm still trying to figure out like what kind of videos or interesting things I'd want to do because you do realize when you're going through TikTok, there are, it is boring if it's just a time lapse. Like you yeah. have to do something cool and you want to yeah. get noticed for doing a cool video. So I'm still like trying to figure that out. Um, yeah, yeah. And you want to put the right effort in it. Yeah, you do. You have to put effort in, in it for people to like it. Otherwise, you know, you're just wasting your own time, really if you're not yeah. going to try. So um, I've been, I've been mixing around with like different videos, like day in the life videos. And then like, you know, painting from start to finish kind of videos, like little close ups of what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm just mm. trying, it's a good platform to try different things out because it's not as curated. I think as Instagram and Facebook, like you, any of your videos could go viral, which is a cool thing. Mm. Um, so it's a great way to just test different things out, like test, you know, a video of just a time lapse or test a video that's like super edited or like, you know, you can do very, very different things on there and just see what works. And I think that's exactly. why that, that platform is really good for that. And then mm -hmm. I used to do YouTube like sort of tutorials, but then I wasn't really feeling tutorials. I feel like some artists, it comes naturally to them to do tutorials mm -hmm. and teaching. And I just feel like when it comes to like doing my own artwork, I'm not really, I'm not really sure how to teach <laughs> because I, know, I, I, know. I was never really taught like I don't really know the language if you get what I mean it's like oh just yeah. shade this bit <laughs> but um I'm way more I'm way more passionate about the business side of things so mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why I'm doing these chats and I've done my book and um I hope to expand that more into like more chats and a podcast and things like that um because I'm way more passionate about talking about the business side of art and I think okay. that's what artists are lacking as yeah, well definitely. because you know when it comes to being an artist, yes, practice your skill, keep practicing, keep developing, find your style. But at the end of the day, if you don't know how to market your work, you won't sell your work. And then, you know, you will be like a starving artist. It just won't yeah. work. But there's no reason to be a starving artist if someone tells you how to market it. So I, I'd like yeah. to be that person that just helps people and be like, you know, this is fantastic. This is how you sell it, you know? <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So do you see yourself as a... I think you, you see yourself as a consultant kind of in the future. Yeah, yeah more like that. Yeah. But I, I also like to be the proof of concept. Like I don't want to just stop doing my own artwork. Course, I want to yeah. develop my own career and be an yeah. artist. And of course. really the sort of mentoring consultancy t side of things is like as I'm learning. So I mm -hmm. feel like it's mm -hmm. easier to teach someone, you know, how to do something if I've already tried it myself. And that's basically what my book is like. That's Definitely. my four years of experience of building my business yeah. like it's everything that I've done so yeah. yeah I feel like I feel like I can back it up <laughs> if you get what I mean I'm not yeah, I'm not yeah. teaching something I've never done before so 100%. yeah yeah 100% yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree because even in my workshop sometimes I discover something in people and mm. then I go and apply it to myself and I'm like mm. oh okay that's how it works okay yeah you I learn like a it. lot yeah <laughs> you know? yeah no yeah yeah fantastic yeah. Definitely. So when it came to your commissions, you said you started just with your friends first, um, mm -hmm. asking you for commissioned handbags and things. How did you expand that? Uh, yeah, so basically what I was doing, um, it was just, you know, um, it was, yeah, just my, my closest circle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I decided to do is open up my Instagram account. So one of my friends like, open your Instagram account, just put it out there. And yeah. I did that. And then slowly, slowly, I invested in, um, for example, having my own summer bag. So people would request to, uh, a painting on it, you know, a nice mm -hmm. summer tote bag, uh, other than, you know, their own things. Uh, mm -hmm. And really, I, I focused on Instagram uh, promotions, I would say. And yeah. I also focused on um, good photography. Mm -hmm. And so I, I bought my own, these, one of these, you know, um, light boxes. 
uh, yep. that I, yeah, that you put your, the items in and you take the okay. pictures, Perfect. Uh, second pictures, yeah. but you know, I, I tried. Um, but lighting then, is um, the key with pictures though, isn't it? If you've got good definitely. lighting, it will come out. You like, you don't have to do that much editing kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, I never used like, which I, I discovered now is important. I never use, for example, the same kind of, uh, shading or the same kind of settings for the pictures which you mm -hmm. need to do for Instagram you know mm -hmm. to give a good aesthetic for your profile mm -hmm. but it, it actually was working it was working very good because we um as a country we don't have a lot of people doing this for mm -hmm. a living so um it was quite a good um audience that I had uh but um as you said you know sometimes some things are not for you this is what you discover over time yeah. So uh, I just discovered that I don't want people telling me what they want to paint exactly to the line, to the dot. It was just Yeah. This doesn't leave exhausting. you much room for creativity, does it? Some people actually, they come in and they're like, you're the artist, do whatever you want. And this is okay. where I have fun. And yeah. then people are like, no, please get this line lower. Or like, please add more white here. And it's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> So, uh, uh, but yeah, mainly, I would say mainly Instagram. Uh, I grew it here on Instagram. And um, I also actually, Sima, I collaborated with a lot of uh, local um, uh, startups that have Yeah, tell me more about those. What did you do with them? Yeah, so uh, a couple of startups or even uh, some of them actually had, you know how in Ramadan, actually, sometimes we wear kaftans. Mm -hmm. So uh, I collaborated with a couple of uh, local shops on painting on their kaftans. Oh, wonderful! And a, yeah, and a couple of uh, so, uh, a couple of uh, shops I collaborated with uh, with them on collections of bags, of small bags and big mm -hmm. bags. So we did specific bags. Uh, I also collaborated with uh, some uh, global shops like the Athletes Foot, where we had you know going back to school pop up. Uh, where I was there for a couple of days, I was personalizing people's bags, mm -hmm. and so I had a lot of a lot of pop ups actually, which um, I found very nice and expanded uh, expanded my name a lot. Uh, oh, brilliant! Cause, you know, because you know people get to meet you and yeah. uh, they get to have a chat with you. So yeah. that was that was a key marketing point, I would mm. say. Even though pop -ups. I was very uh, yeah pop ups shop pop ups, and um, even though I was very underpaid to be honest for that. Uh, mm. but it was it was a nice it was a nice experience to get yourself out there definitely mm. yeah sometimes you sort of have to think of that as an investment like you're not trying to make a profit at the pop-up you're just trying to show yourself yeah. off and get people to notice you and that's more of the value that you're getting out of it isn't it definitely exactly like um uh actually a, a recent example that happened uh, a few months back I had this workshop uh and I was expecting 10 people and <laughs> maybe three people signed up and oh, yeah. I was feeling devastated. I was like, Oh my God, what should I do? But yeah. one of the people actually, she had 20,000 followers mm -hmm. on her account mm -hmm. and I love her. Like she's a very famous personality and mm -hmm. I just, I just loved her because she was, um, she was the kind of person you want to be when you grow up. She's very old. She's a grandma and yeah. she gives, uh, she gives hope for a lot of people and she's very uh -huh. real. So yeah. I was like, oh my God, no, I'm doing it. And I lost actually around 300 pounds just mm -hmm. for the venue because, you know, a lot of people didn't show up. So I had a loss in that, mm -hmm. uh, in that workshop. As soon as she started, and I didn't even ask her for anything, and she actually paid for her ticket. As soon mm -hmm. as she started putting, uh, putting things about the workshop on her Instagram page, uh, mm -hmm. just, for, just on the story, she's like, today I'm here with you, sir, yeah. this artist. Uh, I'm painting today. I've reached 500 followers in one day. Wow. Just from her. Just from her. Yeah. And a lot of them were asking, what is the next workshop? What is the, you know? And so, so sometimes you have to sacrifice. Yeah. But then you don't know what's going to come next, you know? Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. It's like taking that gamble, isn't it? But that's what putting yourself out there is all about. Like, you, you, you'll have your wins and you'll have your losses, but you never really know what will come out of it. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah so definitely. it's just so important just to try. 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't be scared of it failing because if you're scared of it failing and that's stopping you from doing it anyway, then you've already failed because you haven't yeah. tried it in the first place. So Definitely, definitely. No, 100%. that's fantastic. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I love hearing about your workshops. It's so exciting. <laughs> Thank you, you too. <laughs> uh, I have some more questions for you. Um, yeah, tell me more about uh, how social media has changed for you in the last few years. Like, do you feel like has it has it grown bigger because of the pandemic, or has it? I guess, diverted more because you've changed your style or like, how is it, how has it sort of fluctuated or changed for you? I think it made me realize um, that I can do more than I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it made me realize that I can learn a lot from other artists mm. uh, in, in social media. Like mm -hmm. I, I approached a lot of you, you're one of them. And I approached and found out a lot of uh, artists through social media mm -hmm. and uh, especially through Instagram because, you know, the algorithm allows you to discover other artists when you're searching other artists. So yeah. uh, it's lovely. And, you know, I've been connecting to them and I've been chatting with them and I've been getting some help actually um, when I struggle with some bits. For example, the other day I was struggling with uh, some um, the, of the gold leaves. Uh, mm -hmm. the the gold paper and uh, I asked an artist what medium she uses and she took me through it so I think it's great to be honest how mm. it's changing I th I, th yeah. I think people were less friendly <laughs> when it all started but now yeah. I think it's all about sharing experience and being mm. open to one another mm. yeah I definitely feel that I feel like especially since the pandemic hit there's been a lot more new artists on the scene because people have either quit their jobs or you know they've been re made redundant and that kind of thing so they sort of have to find new ways of income and that's sort of driven them back to you know what they always thought was their hobby and now yeah. they've realized oh my gosh I can actually make money out of this and then just continue that way so bit, I've seen so many more artists on the scene which has been wonderful and that's how I've so sort of built my community of artists yeah. and it's just been so lovely to see so many new ones and I do feel like it's a more friendlier and supportive environment yeah like I didn't yeah. really feel that when I first started back in 2016 I think it was mm. um mm. it was very more like no I'm not telling you my secret kind of thing yeah yeah um yeah which which isn't helpful it's like I'm not gonna steal all of your clients you know I'm, exactly. I'm just starting <laughs> I'm just it trying never to happens. Buy. <laughs> it yeah. never happens that's the thing like your your eye is gonna be 100 percent different than mine yeah they're gonna be so different exactly and like what artists have to remember is like there's enough clients and there's enough people to go around to you know so everyone can buy you know your artwork it's it's not about oh no there's not enough people buying pet portraits anymore like there are so many more pet portrait artists now but you exactly. know that doesn't really worry me because everyone's you know entitled to run their own business and be their own pet portrait artist but you know I'm different and people would choose me because of my style and the way I do pet portraits and you know there's I, I think there's like 50 I, I can see like color pencil pet portrait artists but every single one of them has a different style and a different way of doing things and it's just so beautiful and I yeah. just love seeing that you know you can have the same medium but it yeah. always comes out different and like that's what art is I and mean, that's why you're going to be chosen because of your your perspective and your story and your style that's yeah. why you're chosen by a client, not because you're specifically doing a thing. Yeah, so, 100%, 100%. Yeah. No, it's so wonderful. I can't remember what the question was, but <laughs> 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 which is like diverging off into other things. Um, so you seem quite confident and you're doing your workshops and things like that. How, how do you feel like you've got that confidence? Like, how were you when you first started your workshops? Were you like nervous and scared? And how did you get over that kind of thing? Um, to be honest, I've always been a people's person, mm -hmm. uh, and my mom and dad, funny enough, are academics, uh -huh. <laughs> so I think it runs in my genes <laughs> yeah. to be able to teach, yeah. uh, but uh, I would say I, I always get nervous on the day because sometimes, you know, I forget to buy specific things or like mm -hmm. last minute booking, people book last minute and I need to like mm -hmm. buy more things or mm -hmm. more tools. Uh, but it comes within time, definitely comes mm -hmm. within time. And especially if uh, at the start, like, I don't know what sh I should buy. Like, I didn't know what 
people would like and don't like mm. and i was overspending to be honest on okay. you know the curation and making it perfect and making it a perfect experience mm-hmm. but i realized people come to have fun um mm. they don't need to overspend uh, mm-hmm. you can have your revenue and still you know people can still have fun yeah and and uh i've been um i've been trying every time to see uh what people uh like by uh having a survey at the end of the workshop oh that's really good yeah yeah it adds a lot of uh it adds a lot to me when people mm. fill them up and give them back to me mm. it really doesn't help when they're like everything is perfect no <laughs> i need <laughs> just to tell, tell me something. the truth yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell me the truth <laughs> don't make it perfect yeah um, yeah so sometimes it's annoying when they're just answering like that because i know it's not perfect and um, But yeah, I mean, um and most of the time to be honest, um it's really really uh, important to prep ahead of time mm-hmm. and also to have um negotiated with the location you're doing it in. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to to have my own location for workshops if I'm mm. planning to do this, you know, for a real um a real business model mm. um you know have my own space because it would save you a lot of time a lot of hassle i mean mm. yes for example you'd be paying rent but in the same time you know it's your own space you can mm-hmm. open it for whoever you want you can have your mm. own timings mm. but um yeah it's important to negotiate for example one of the spaces i dealt with they overbooked me okay. which stressed me a lot because mm. I cannot do I cannot teach 20 people at the same time like mm. it was just really That's a lot tiring. of people yeah yeah and you want to give everyone the real experience you know yeah. and you want to give them like how can I it was just impossible and I had mm. complaints at the end of it they were like we just thought it was too many people and the artist didn't help everyone which was uh, which was what fair I, I suppose yeah, but a bit annoying I, for you Exactly. Yeah. I didn't plan for this to happen. Mm. So, you just need to have all your terms and conditions clear out with the venue or whoever you're booking through uh mm. before you start. This is the most yeah. important part because you know yourself, you know you're going to do your best, but you don't know mm. what uh what objections or whatever people are going to put in your way. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, definitely. So be really flexible with what's happening around you and constantly thinking about solutions yes. to any problems. That's also really important, Sima. Like it's really important to be flexible and mm. to have plan B and C. Like yeah. uh now I always go into workshop with extra tools. <laughs> yeah. In case someone else just shows up, you know, you don't want to be like, "Oh no, I can't take you on." Yeah. Um so th- these are the things I'm learning as I go along. Mm. No, that's fantastic. So If you so say I want to start a workshop what are the three main tips you would give me for a good workshop experience Okay so first of all uh plan out the um the workshop layout so if it's mm-hmm. three hours plan mm-hmm. out exactly what you expect people to do in those three hours Okay uh secondly it's really important to um market it in the right way Mm-hmm. so then people know what to expect when they come in mm-hmm. you you will get questions from people uh, when you post it or in the dms but it's important for people when they come in they either see the same thing you have put or more if you deliver mm-hmm. less mm-hmm. it's not going to be a good experience it's not going to be passed around people mm-hmm. are not going to recommend it for sure mm-hmm. yeah and i would say the third thing would be is be organized <laughs> Yeah. definitely be organized and uh try to uh have all your items and your um equipment and your tools ready before the event mm-hmm. and i would say number 4 which i recommend but i'm also a sustainability enthusiast so i hate doing it but i have mm-hmm. to do it because i know it's the best way we learn is i provide brochures or like um i would say brochure like a a guide in my workshops okay. like even if it's a 2 hour workshop i mm. always provide a guide on what we will do so then people mm. go back to it when they go back home and yeah. al- always has like some like for example i prefer to primary colors secondary colors you know tertiary colors i try to make it as simple for them as possible so then when they go back they're like okay this this is what i learned today this is the the meaning behind this workshop maybe i'm not happy with my artwork but mm. let me go back to it and redo it and this is what i tell them at the end of it you're not happy mm. 
go back to the guide, redo it, and try to practice again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that sounds really good. Wonderful. Thank You're you. really good at workshops. <laughs> You're learning a lot from, I guess you learn a lot the more, you do. Yeah. <laughs> the more you do. The more you do, the more you learn as well, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely with you. <laughs> so you do workshops, collaborations, murals. I've seen you do um, artwork on jean jackets, which I love. I love those paintings. They're just so cool. Handbags. What's, I guess, if you had to pick one, what would your favorite one be? Mm. That's a tough one. Yeah, yeah, I would pick say, one. Yeah, I would say commissions uh, yeah. on, on canvases because it just mm-hmm. lets you, you know, flow and like mm. you're just in your zone and yeah. you're just doing, you know, what you love the most and you're just portraying what you're really feeling inside. Mm. So I think, I think that's the best one. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And you know, your mural work, like how did you start um, doing collaborations and doing mural work? Like, did you go to the shop or person <laughs> that owned the wall and ask um, them or like? With murals, it was actually a um, funny story. So my first mural was um, unpaid, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I just, uh, I just suggested to uh, one of my friends, can I paint on your office? Like, would you like, like, a, you know, nice painting on your wall? And he's like, yeah, yeah why not? So I did that for him. Uh-huh. And um, he was really happy with it. I was really happy with the process. Mm. It's so tiring. It's so mm. tiring to just go to one location and paint. But uh, that's how I started. So I started off for free. I still do mm-hmm. some free morals because I think it's very important to for an artist to practice on morals yeah until you grow big uh because morals are not easy and um so the first one it was an office then i did the gym then i did a beauty salon uh, i painted on their chairs which was really interesting and yeah i thought is that the green chairs and you have no, a video actually, okay it was and that was actually actually for charity for a charity in kuwait oh, okay uh yeah i painted a um, on a chair for them and we just uh, put it there for people to buy it mm. so kind of like upcycled it but, yeah no, no, uh, that was amazing beautiful <laughs> thank you thank you so uh i was taking it very uh, very slowly with morals but the more i discover um um what i like to paint in morals the, the more i like to uh do it even if it's for a lower cost than what i usually mm. charge mm. No, that's wonderful. And how did you advertise that you painted murals? Did you physically go into the shops and tell them or did you give out leaflets or what was your sort of marketing strategy for that? Uh, to be honest, it's always been Instagram. But recently, mm-hmm. um, six months ago, I, I launched my website mm-hmm. and uh, I've seen like a lot of people have been telling me like, uh, I didn't know you have a website. It looks wonderful. Or like, mm-hmm. I didn't know you do this. Your website like looks really good on there. And uh, so uh, my website has been, I think, um, helpful. It's yeah. been a lot of helpful. But um, the thing is, Seema, like, especially in Kuwait, people don't use Facebook. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's very different here. Like, people don't okay. use Facebook. They don't refer to um, email for, like, yeah. you know, like a, a newsletter or something. Okay. They don't care about that, you know? They, mm-hmm. they, they're more into Twitter and Instagram. So, okay. Um, I realized like to grow my follower base or my, uh, my uh, client base, I need to do more on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't find the time for that, but I'm trying. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say definitely through um, Instagram and also word of mouth, of course, because mm-hmm. also like when you do, for, uh, when you do murals for uh, businesses, Mm-hmm. They will take pictures of you. They will post yeah. them on their Instagram account. Mm-hmm. So it slowly builds up. It slowly yeah. builds up and picks up. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's really it's good. About, yeah, it's about mentioning other people and then mentioning you again. That balance helps a lot and uh, it makes your, your name grow definitely. Mm. No, fantastic. And have you ever used PR, like public relations, to grow your um, business? As in like, within Like getting agency? into... Like getting into blogs, magazines, newspapers. Have you done anything like that before? Not yet, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I'd like to do that when I have a certain style that I want to be known for and Mm -hmm. uh, grown for. Uh, 
And uh, something recently I've been doing actually uh, as an advice for people if they're thinking of doing morals, it's been yeah. so much easier, is I've been giving quotations. And along with the quotations, I give um, uh, the freedom of five alterations of a digital artwork. So mm -hmm. before I start the moral, I do mm -hmm. um, a sketch on my iPad uh, mm -hmm. of the actual painting, how it's completely going to be. And mm -hmm. once the client approves it, I start right away. Yeah. I don't start unless they approve that digital painting because I realized in the past when I do something and they don't like it, it's like, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> I did it already. I'm sorry, you know? Yeah. And that's not good for your reputation. Mm. So um, a recommendation is to do a digital artwork first before you start. Yeah, I think that's the same for every commission because commissions are about customer communication. That's the main thing. If you don't have good uh, communication with your customer, you're most likely not get a good result for that customer. Definitely, so it's, definitely. It's so important so they understand what you can produce and what you're going to produce for them. And also for you to understand what they're actually looking for and how they feel about it because I do pet portraits, so it's, it's an incredibly personal thing to do someone's pet. So I want to make sure it looks like their pet, it feels like their pet. When yeah. they look at it, you know, you almost want them to cry because it's their pet. Like, if you don't yeah. get that re reaction, then you almost haven't done a good job, if you get what I mean. Yeah, so definitely, definitely. It's so important. Yeah, mock-ups are a brilliant way to dissolve any sort of issues. Do a mock-up first before you or pencil touches that paper. Yeah. Like, yeah. I always do that too. Like, make sure, do you approve? This is what it's going to look like obviously better because you know I'm terrible at Photoshop kind of thing <laughs> but um this is what it will look like and then you just do it and then you know I've, I've never really had an issue with drawing something and they've been completely unhappy with it so Amazing. yeah it's, it's because you just you just have to get the first part right and then mm -hmm. it's sort of stress-free isn't it because then you're just exactly. left to it and you can create yeah. and you can be in that stress-free creating environment and do something that someone loves rather than exactly. worrying oh no what if they hate this bit or this bit it's like you never really want to feel like that do you yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um i have some more questions so what's your uh experience have you done paid ads before um like instagram paid ads uh you mean with like um another when business like like, a like when you promote a post on instagram or like yeah, I've done yeah. I've done that for my workshops in the past, actually, mm -hmm. uh, and also a couple of um, paintings that I have, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't see it as um, effective. Mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> yeah, is I feel like it's one of those things that um, it is effective if you have the money to put into it to try different things out. I feel like it's a lot of tweaking, like mm -hmm. learning the audience and uh the country and like it's a lot of like tweaking to really um yeah. target it but Definitely. once you've got that then it works it's just like okay. you have to keep putting money into really? it and sometimes okay. it, it can be hard because I guess you sort of you need to like I think you need to at least test it for like a week so imagine you did one mm -hmm. ad for a week say five pounds a day that, that's a lot of money um mm -hmm. to try something out but you need to yes. have it going for long enough to see if it does anything and then if that's exactly. you know doing okay then okay tweak the audience maybe make the audience smaller maybe mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. you've targeted to one single state in America or something like that like that's how yeah. targeted sometimes it needs to be um and then that's another five pounds for a week like per week exactly per day in a week and so that's yeah. more money so I do find like it can be a bit of a money sucker, but then once you've got that down, like the formula down, then mm. really it, it does work. Yeah, it picks up and it starts okay. actually creating for you. Because I did do this a couple of times um, with some of my trying to grow like my email list and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I did find that uh, I, I had the perfect formula. I feel like it was the perfect formula. I had a really good like rate of getting people to my website. And then I did something with the audience and it was just never the same. And I just couldn't get it back. It's like, oh no, I should have saved that formula. But yeah, it took me like, I think like three months to try and get it wow. like, going. Constant, constantly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It does take time, but it, I think it does work. And I feel like that's why a lot of big businesses doing it do it because they can just pour loads of money into it, which is harder for like 
you know, small businesses like us, like, you know, mm. we don't really have a lot of disposable income to try these exactly. things out. But yeah. they do work if you can get it right. So, okay. yeah. I think no, that it's something get, that I... Try yeah, sometime. yeah. Like, I, there are a few courses on, like, Skillshare and things like that, of, like, yeah. talking about Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Um, so I have been thinking about trying to do some of those just to figure it out. Because it can be quite yeah. complicated as well, but... You know, yeah. people do them for a reason. So I think it's worth trying, like, not to Definitely. eliminate it completely, but also not to eliminate the fact that um, uh, how organic reach is also really yeah. good too. So I just think, like, I think it, it doesn't sometimes fit in my, in my case because mm. I don't have something constant that I want to sell. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because I'm in between so many things or services mm. that I'm providing, mm. um, I'm not sure what I really want people to come in and go for. <laughs> yeah, because you're always changing. Yeah, so, um, but it's a, good, it's a good thing, I think, to start doing once I'm sure of what I want to provide for people. Mm. So what, what future do you see for your business? Where would you like to take it more? Because you, you want to continue doing workshops and what else would you like to do? Uh, I think I want to, yeah, I want to like uh, develop the course, which I'm giving the three day course that I'm doing next week. I want to develop mm-hmm. that into something that can help people with uh, their artistic journey, because mm-hmm. I think uh, a lot of people need help with that. Uh, yeah. Especially in our cases, uh, Thema, mm-hmm. like we, um, it took us years to discover that. So mm-hmm. I think for people to, uh, you know, get a kickstart in three days, or even if I, you know, develop it into, I don't know, a two weeks course and have it verified, uh, I'd really love that to, like, be uh, something I am constantly providing in the future. Mm. Uh, as well as um, maybe having my first exhibition, but mm-hmm. I, I have no idea when that's going to happen. Uh, yeah. But I'm really, really... Uh, hoping uh, to have my first exhibition maybe in two years time mm-hmm. no that's wonderful and do you know like would it be campus paintings like painting on clothes or bags or yeah it would definitely ha- be uh, canvas painting mm-hmm. um, definitely and uh, I can uh, picture all blue because all I can think about is blue these days like the past oh, really? couple of months it's just been my main color and it's just been crazy like every time I want to paint, it's like blue. I want blue. I want blue. I want That's blue. really weird because I've been the same and I've just painted like these blue roses. No way. <laughs> yeah. I just, I've been really excited about blue. So I've just painted this huge like blue rose and then put like gold, put gold leaf and stuff on it. I've just been, I just want to paint more blue flowers. Like I don't know why. It's yeah, just like yeah. in my head, like I've got to paint blue flowers. Like, where are we getting this from? <laughs> I don't know, but the universe, I don't know what it is now, but oh. blue is definitely the color. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Oh, I can't wait to see your blue artwork then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. Oh, so Amazing. does anybody have any questions or do you have any questions for me? Because I guess we're coming to the end of it now. It's like almost been an hour, which is, yeah. oh, it's been love it's, chatting it's been to great. you. You so too, good. Yeah, so easy to talk to. to. Yeah, yeah, I'll have you to have too. you back. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't have any um, questions, but I just want to say that it's very courageous of you to, uh, to switch, you know, from a career to another. Um, and you really inspired me a lot. Oh, thank and you. And I've been telling your story to everyone. <laughs> like, oh, I started so off with my, my family like this person you know what she did like, <laughs> yeah it's really inspiring like it's more inspiring than you think and I think um, it's really nice that you're sharing with your experience, your experience and uh, your values with people and it's not easy what we did you mm. know switching careers it's well, really yeah not you've easy. done it too so you know you get yeah. it <laughs> Yeah, I totally get it. And, you know, to be able to, you know, live on your own terms is challenging. But I think Mm. um, it's what makes us happy and we have to fight for for what makes us happy. Exactly, yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, if you're not happy, then what are you doing? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. You need need to do what you love. And, like, I feel like that's, like, my main saying now. I've got it written on my wall, like, do what you love. And I feel like that's that's so important to me. I I don't want to wake up and regret anything and that's just sort of what I was feeling coming towards the end of my engineering career. Like I just, 
I felt exhausted from it and it just wasn't fun and I felt like I, I was something was missing and I could mm -hmm. do something better because you like go away like you know you're because I was at NASA and there's people that are so passionate like about everything Definitely. there like yeah, you know they're yeah. reading about it they're listening to podcasts about it you know they're doing everything they can to absorb as much information as possible and I just didn't feel that way like I'd come home and I'd like watch telly like I, I couldn't process anymore I just yeah. wasn't that excited but then when I started my art career that's how I am now I'm constantly listening to art podcasts magazines and reading interviews and I'm literally doing everything I can to keep up with the art world and I feel like oh that's because I just wasn't passionate about engineering, but I'm passionate about art. So I'm just so pleased I managed to find my passion. You know, it take, took me till I was 25, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, it takes some people longer, it takes some people shorter, but everybody has yeah. their own journey. And I think that's what's really special about finding, I think finding art as well. Like a lot of people wait, because I was thinking of waiting until like I retire to do my art. I was like, oh, yeah. you know, when I'm 60, I'll paint every day for the rest of my life. It's just like, oh, just do that now. No. <laughs> do it now. Paint now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you felt as well? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, um, especially like, as I told you, I was in between um, graduating and finding a job. Uh, mm. I would I was always like oh you know I'll do I'll do art someday but um as I was you know in between jobs I was working I was always thinking about my art you know yeah. like um I want to go back home and paint like I don't want to be here you know yeah. and you just but, and you sit in meetings and you're like what are they really talking about like, <laughs> why am I why on earth am I here <laughs> I yeah. don't get it like okay, I have this CV, you know, that I worked so hard for, but it's like, yeah. this isn't me. Like, I'm not yeah. that proud of what this is, you know? Mm. Yeah, I this think that's also the hardest you. part. Yeah, because, yeah. like, I did feel a lot like, oh, no, what have I done? I've thrown away 10 years of engineering. Like, it's a lot of stuff I've built on my CV, and I was so scared that the art wouldn't, I guess, fill that gap. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. But I feel like it definitely has. Like, you know, I never would have built my own business. I never would have written a book. Like, I've done things I never thought that I would you do. You would do. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what art's given me. It's given me that room to create mm -hmm. and just decide what I want to do with my life. And I feel like yeah. that's what it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Well, it's been so lovely chatting with you. You too. I've you loved too. every second. I feel like we're just so similar. And I'd love us to keep in touch and chat more. Of course. Of course. Uh, so to conclude, this was the last live chat of the week. It's been so wonderful. Thank you to all the artists that have joined me this week. Um, you can see all of the videos on my IGTV channel. And I will also save this one to my IGTV channel. And it's on YouTube. You can go to YouTube, Art is My Career, and all the videos are on there as well for you to watch. And this was to celebrate the first year anniversary of my book, Art is My Career. So thank, thank you, you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. You too. Bye.